Hi students, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see the medulla oblongata. Medulla. Okay. So, uh, medulla is a part of the brain stem. So, when you draw medulla, you have to draw the medulla like this. Understood? So, so many bulges I am drawing, right? Alright. Okay. This is the center one. Okay. This is the center one. And you have uh, both sides of the center, you have a bulge. Mm, one more. So, both sides of the center you have a um, bulge. This bulge is called pyramid. What is this called? Pyramid. Next to that you have another one nice bulge will uh, give some separate color for this. There is a nice oval shaped bulge is called that is called as olive. Okay. I will draw this. This bulge is called as olive. What is this oval shaped bulge? Olive. Right. The next thing is the third one is called as pedangle, inferior cerebellar pedangle. The third one is called as inferior cerebellar pedangle. The third one is called as inferior cerebellar pedangle. Hmm? Okay, inferior cerebellar pedangle. And here is the very important organ present here that is your cerebellum. Cerebellum. Okay, so the inferior cerebellar pedangle is entering into the cerebellum. This is a connection. So, inferior cerebellar pedangle is a connection existing between the medulla oblongata and the uh, cerebellum. Existing between the medulla oblongata and cerebellum. This is a tract, this is a road between the cerebellum and the medulla, medulla oblongata. Then next is the pyramid. What is that pyramid I said? So, pyramid is the decussation. Pyramid is because of the decussation of corticospinal tract. So, pyramid is the decussation of what tract? Decussation means crossing over of corticospinal, the king of the tracts, corticospinal tract, very good, finished. And then what is this olive? Olive is a bulge because produced by the underlying nucleus called inferior olivary nucleus, inferior olivary nucleus, they form a bulge that is called olive. So, three things we have written. Now, the most important, next important thing is, what are the nerves coming out through that? So, this is called anterolateral sulcus. This is a central sulcus, right? So, this is called anteromedian fissure or sulcus. And the next one is called anterolateral. Anterolateral means only one cranial nerve is coming out. That is your hypoglossal nerve is coming out. Which nerve is coming out? Hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal is 12th nerve. And then from the Posterolateral sulcus, it means between the olive and the inferior cerebellar pedangle, there are three nerves coming out 9, 10, 11. Three nerves are coming out. So, there are two things. So, you, you might have seen in your uh, uh, skull, this is foramen magnum, this is the inferior, this is the petros, petrosal bone. And from here, this is the middle cranial fossa and this is the posterior cranial fossa. Can you remember? Here in the foramen magnum, just in front, you have the hypoglossal canal. Through that only hypoglossal nerve. And here is your jugular foramen. Through that only your 9, 10, 11 nerves are coming out. This is your hypoglossal nerve is coming out. So, this is how, this is the same arrangement also here. So, here medially you have the hypoglossal nerve, that is why here medially the anterolateral sulcus between the pyramid and olive, your hypoglossal nerve is coming and here laterally posterolateral sulcus between the olive and the inferior cerebellar pedagogy, 9th and 11th pyramid nerves are coming. So, this is about the external features of the medulla. If I turn the medulla up ulta, what are the structures you could see? So, if I turn the uh, medulla oblongata, you can see beautifully the fourth ventricle, right? So, you have, you can nicely see the fourth ventricle. Okay, this is the posterior aspect. In the posterior aspect, you can see few bulges. What are the bulges you could see? Okay, number one, this medial one is called fasciculus tubercle, tubercle, which tubercle? Gracile tubercle and this is called cuneate tubercle. What is this tubercle? The medial one is called gracile tubercle. The lateral one is called cuneate tubercle. Medial one is called gracile tubercle and the lateral one is called cuneate tubercle. This is the posterior part of the medulla oblongata and the upper part you have the fourth ventricle. Here you have the fourth ventricle. Okay, Part of the fourth ventricle is here. 
so you have to write what is this tubercle how it is formed beneath that you have the nuclear the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus which carries the proprioceptive fibers they are coming from the spinal cord they are crossing this area and they form a bulge here that is called as fasciculus gracilis graces inside keep it in mind that girl graces inside the cun cuneatus is outside so gracilis and cuneatus two fasciculus means fibers they form a tubercle that is called gracile tubercle and cuneate tubercle above that you have part of the fourth ventricle so fourth ventricle is formed by partly by the medulla oblongata partly by the pons so the upper part of the fourth ventricle is formed by the pons lower part is formed by the medulla oblongata in between you have nice something called as stria medulla since it is in the medulla it is called stria what is this stria we are going to see in the cut section stria medullaris from where it is coming we will see so these are the components and here in the fourth ventricle if you see there is a midline uh, sulcus that is called sulcus median sulcus laterally you have the sulcus limitans you might have read it in the um, la fourth ventricle so sulcus limitans so part of the triangle this is called vestibular triangle vestibular triangle means which nucleus will be here vestibular nucleus vestibular is eighth nerve nucleus so eighth nerve nucleus is partly present in the pons partly present in the medulla and then here you have the hypoglossal <coughs> so here uh, you have to draw a uh, line from the inferior area to this area this so here is a hypoglossal nucleus down you have the vagal nucleus this is the 11th and 10th nucleus vagal nucleus is here so this is 12th inside that's why the 12th nucleus is placed inside and the 9th and 11 are placed outside so how many nucleus to be placed inside the 9 10 and 11 together here okay so how many nucleus are placed inside here we are going to see that so eighth nerve is mainly for the pons but partly it is present here in the uh, medulla oblongata so this is about the posterior aspect of the medulla oblongata here i have to mention only one thing what is called stria medullaris now i am going to the section so if i put a cut section here i have to draw first section is for the um, pyramidal decussation so if i draw a section i have to draw one section only for the decussation of what pyramid pyramid means what i have already told you corticospinal tract this corticospinal tract coming from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord when it reaches the medulla oblongata it decussates it decussates decussates means what crossing after crossing it forms a bulge that is called as pyramid so this is called pyramid beneath the pyramid that is a beauty beneath the pyramid there is a big uh, r shaped nucleus is present here that is called as arcuate nucleus what is this arcuate nucleus that is a nucleus which is getting displaced from the pons pons you have a nice big nucleus part of this nucleus is displaced down 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 it is coming to the medulla and it will settle down below the pyramid it is called as arcuate nucleus this arcuate nucleus they send a fiber and that fibers they come and they arch they form they come out through this um, midline median sulcus and they come here as stria medullaris and goes via what is the speed angle present here inferior cerebellar speed angle it goes to the cerebellum so repeat again from the pons a part of the pontine nuclei got displaced and settled down in the medulla it is called as arcuate nucleus this arcuate nucleus comes out through the median sulcus and comes out as a stria called stria medullaris and goes via the inferior cerebellar speed angle to the cerebellum finished this stria this fibers are coming out as posterior ex anterior external arcuate fibers what is this called anterior external arcuate fibers and this is mcq anterior external arcuate fibers are formed by arcuate nucleus so ready anterior so definitely something is called as posterior external arcuate fibers and internal arcuate fibers what are they we will be seeing next so this is called anterior external arcuate fibers they are coming from the arcuate nucleus so that is finished so this is called pyramidal decussation next thing is what is the cut section next i am supposed to draw next cut section i have to draw this pyramid i have to draw and then up we are going and this area posterior column you have two bulges right so bulge number one bulge number two ready so the bulge number one is called this is the midline so this is called uh, 
fasciculus uh, who is there inside grace is there so this nucleus is called here we have a nucleus nice nucleus this is called nucleus gracilis and who is this fellow nucleus cuneatus who is this nucleus cuneatus outside the grace is inside see these two are the nucleus this nucle fibers from the nucleus they cross fibers from the nucleus they cross and they form the internal arcuate fibers so what is this fibers anterior external arcuate fibers they are called internal arcuate fibers these fibers after crossing they form the medial lemniscae very good how this is how the lemniscae is formed so yeah wherever the fibers after crossing they will form a lemniscae this is called medial lemniscae like that in the previous video we saw the spinothalamic tract crossing after crossing over the spinothalamic tract is called a spinal lemniscae here after crossing over this proprioceptive fibers are called as medial lemniscae so one more thing i want to tell you is just the fibers are coming from the proprioceptive fibers are coming from the spinal cord right so i have told you proprioception is coming from the spinal cord right proprioceptive fibers but i said it is not it crossed they will not cross they just come along the posterior column this is called fasciculus gracilis fasciculus the here it is called fasciculus it is not nucleus so in the nucleus is placed in the medulla only now the fibers proprioceptive fibers position joint vibration all are coming here they come by this but they have not yet seen their uh, girl so they are coming 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 they are coming to the medulla after reaching the medulla they saw their girl the girl is your nucleus gracil and nucleus cuneatus after seeing these two fellows they cross they synapse and then they cross they form the internal arcuate fibers after crossing it is called medial lemniscae so if i put a question medial lemniscae is formed by you should answer as uh, which fibers proprioceptive fibers or spinothalamic fibers definitely the answer is yes proprioceptive fibers so proprioception only it is going via the fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus after meeting the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus they decussate and forms the medial lemniscae okay so proprioception medial lemniscae is for proprioception finished spinal lemniscae is the decussation of which fiber spinothalamic tract so spinothalamic tract carries pain and temperature that is different and this is different so this is how this is sensory decussation the third level only the beautiful one the third level decussation is we have to draw again the same here i have to draw the cerebellar pedangle and here i have to draw the fourth ventricle so upper level i have gone okay here i have to draw the pyramid pyramid i will draw i have to draw the which nucleus arcuate nucleus with now i am going to draw all the nucleus medulla three structures are there in the brain stem mid brain pons and medulla oblongata medulla oblongata you have the last four cranial line 10 11 and 12 in the pons you have 5 6 7 and 8 and in the midbrain you have 3 and 4 these are the cranial nerve nucleus and 1 and 2 are there in the cerebrum understood so in the medulla only we are talking so what are the cranial nerve nucleus i am supposed to draw 9 10 11 and 12 shall i draw 9 10 11 and 12 very good so 9 10 11 and draw 12 i'll draw so who is medially placed i said medial one is yes tell me near the foramen magnum which nerve emerges out hypoglossal so here i draw the hypoglossal ready so the hypoglossal is coming out like this both the sides hypoglossal and then laterally what are the nucleus 9 10 11 who is the king 9 10 11 among the 9 10 11 uh, vagus now so vagus you have a separate nucleus called dorsal nucleus of vagus and then 7 uh, uh, sorry 9 and 11 you have something else called as nucleus ambiguus so there is some different nucleus called nucleus ambiguous nucleus ambiguous another one nucleus for the taste fibers it is called nucleus tractus solitorius all are here only along with that throughout from the spinal cord to the medulla uh, up to the pons level you have uh, one more nucleus called spinal nucleus on the spinal tract of trigeminal what is that called spinal nucleus 
and the spinal tract of trigeminal always you are supposed to draw so four things i have drawn number one is dorsal nucleus of vagus only for the vagus you have a special nucleus called dorsal nucleus of vagus and uh, uh, next one is the nucleus ambiguous ambiguous for 9 10 11 and the nucleus tractus solitarius is for 7 9 10 and uh, this is for um, spinal nucleus and the spinal tract so nine this three fellows they come out as 9 10 11 cranial nerves right so these two and the spinal tract and spinal nucleus are here then I said here the triangle when you draw um, I put the eighth nerve is coming inside the medulla as well as in the pons. So eighth nerve also I am supposed to draw here. So where will I put the uh, cochlear nucleus? Yeah, here vestibular nucleus. So I have drawn the vestibular nucleus also here. So I have drawn everything. Now my duty is. Uh, here I should draw the lemonisci because it, uh, everything is crossed right so I have to draw the medial lemonisci here and from above you have the something called as medial longitudinal fasciculus okay what is medial longitudinal fasciculus if somebody calls me by the name I have to turn if I want to turn I have to move uh, my neck neck movement is done by the spinal accessory I have to turn my eyes eyes are turned by three four six cranial nerves and I have to hear something my name that is eighth so all these nerves are interconnected by a nerve fiber called medial longitudinal fasciculus that I have to draw here and this is called medial lemniscae I have to draw here now for example now my anterior spinal artery which is supplying this um, area is uh, blocked medial part of the medulla is out so what are the structures will be injured okay one side okay that medial medullary syndrome what i am talking is medial medullary syndrome Med anterior spinal artery only supplies this area so what are the, the components of the medial medullary syndrome hypoglossal nerve yes affected so you will be having ipsilateral loss of uh, movement of the muscles of the tongue and then what about the pyramidal tract yes affected so it is crossed so contralateral or ipsilateral crossed means which side opposite side very good opposite side paralysis and uh, one two and what lemniscae is out medial lemniscae medial lemniscae carries which fibers proprioceptive fibers same side or opposite side obviously opposite side because it is crossed medial lemniscae after crossing the proprioceptive fibers only you have the medial lemniscae so three important features of medial medullary syndrome are hypoglossal nerve is out and it is not crossed so same side paralysis of the tongue muscles and pyramidal tract is out so you have the opposite side or contralateral paralysis of the muscles and then third is medial lemniscae is out so you will be having the uh, contralateral loss of position joint vibration proprioceptive sensations very good that is called medial medullary syndrome but in the exam we will be asking what is called lateral medullary syndrome that is called pica syndrome pica means posterior inferior cerebellar artery the other name for the syndrome is called as lateral medullary syndrome or Ballenberg syndrome Ballenberg syndrome Ballenberg syndrome so we will be asking the components shall we do the components this is the inferior cerebellar pedangle so if the pedangle is out what do you expect so cerebellar symptoms you will be having ataxia so component number one is ataxia number two cerebellum and then obviously nystagmus nystagmus number two this vestibular nucleus is out so you will be having loss of equilibrium so imbalance very good imbalance loss of equilibrium number three uh, what are the next nucleus uh, dorsal nucleus of vagus vagus is out means what is uh, important common pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles so you will be having dysphagia difficulty in eating and then laryngeal muscles dysphonia dysphonia difficulty in phonation so laryngeal muscles are absent and then you will be having spinal nucleus and spinal tract of the trigeminal trigeminal is for the uh, pain and temperature sensation over the face face alone is carried by the spinal nucleus of trigeminal so it is lost so pain and temperature on the side of the face is affected okay so these are the components of which syndrome lateral medullary syndrome understood
so ninth and eleventh nerves out so these are the components and what about the taste sensation nucleus tracta solitaris is out so taste sensation will be lost in the anterior two third of the tongue very good so this is about the, um, the lateral medullary syndrome components so this is about the lateral medullary and this is about the medial medullary syndrome components that is all about the medulla oblongata. So pica syndrome is very important, very important short notes. So you have to write, you have to draw this uh, cut section and you have to place all the nuclei in place and then uh, whatever nucleus is injured you have to write for cerebellum and then the vestibular nucleus and then the dorsal nucleus of vagus and then the spinal nucleus and then all the nerves you have to write about this. Thank you.